Star Drive 117.8 You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay I'm sitting in my ride and it's time to fly So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind Hey guys, how's it going? It's Thursday, April 20th And this is the Morning Star Drive on 117.8 We're on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe, follow us on SoundCloud And make sure to support us on Patreon so what is happening on this wonderful and awesome Thursday? We've got current news from around the world. It's Q&A Thursday and, of course, Sermons in the Sky. All right, everyone, how are you doing today? Yes, it is Thursday. Hope you guys had an amazing and awesome Wednesday service last night. So let's get this day started together here on the Morning Star Drive. Uh, I hope it's a beautiful, wonderful morning, afternoon, evening. Not sure when you're listening to this, but I hope it's beautiful and wonderful anyways. But uh, most important thing, remind everyone to keep liking and commenting. I just want to let you guys know this is one of the best ways you can communicate with me. Well, of course, the best way is to meet in person. And then it would be like... Uh, just uh, on the phone and then text messaging and then emailing, whatever it is. But um, in this platform we have right now, one of the best ways you can communicate with me is just, you know, hitting the like button. You know, if you don't want to do a comment, that's fine. Just hit the like button and I hope that uh, you guys, uh, I'll look at those and I'll say, oh, thank you. Uh, this many people are enjoying today's uh, podcast, whether you're on SoundCloud or YouTube. And comments, of course, is even better. And uh, I really like it how people are communicating with each other. And uh, I think the best thing is we have a very, very uh, good, uh, what do you call it? A good uh, group, a good community here where we're not like, like saying bad things about each other. We do have different opinions and that's fine. And I don't think that's a bad thing either. But I'm very, very thankful and glad that uh, we're able to be very uh, courteous with each other and not treat each other in a bad way if we have different opinions. And I think that's one of the best ways to have a good community. Because a community doesn't mean everyone thinks the same way. It's just a matter of everyone having the same purpose, but we might all have different roads leading to that purpose. All right. So let's build this community, guys, together. Uh, just a reminder, on Saturday, we have our second edition of Provicom. It's Chris J once again over there in the U.S. doing another set of comedy. So I hope you guys will enjoy that one too. So for me, um, it's been a wonderful day. And uh, those of you who are on my Instagram, I did get a fitness check. And I was quite surprised actually because I was sick for like a month and a half. Well, it was just like this light sickness. I was constantly going. And... Um, uh, I got my fitness check, and I'm very, very happy, actually. Uh, very, very surprised, too. Number one, which is usual, I have too much muscle. <laughs> actually, it's been like that for a while where my muscle mass is considered over what is normal. But I guess that's a good thing for me, right? But I, I don't look like, you know, like that type of person, but uh, I have a lot of muscle. Thank you very much. Uh, and my body fat went down like 2% from 18 to 16%, so I'm happy about that. And my overall health score went, jumped up from 83 to 86, so I'm happy about that too. And I'm, you know, they said if I want, if, if I should, they, um, that machine was apparently telling me that I should lose one more kilogram, but when I was at 79, 78 kilograms, I actually felt really weak and tired, so uh, I'm really happy right now at 80 to 82, around there. That's like kind of how much I weigh, but I, I feel the healthiest at that time there. So, uh, but I think what, you know, so I'm healthy physically and, uh, the thing that's making me really, really happy also is my spiritual condition, praying seven times a day for Sunstream, kind of re reconnecting my heart, uh, in this history, praying for the entire situation. Uh, that is something I, I think is a huge help for me. Uh, and, uh, that's something that, uh, kind of is restoring me back, uh, spiritually recentering myself three, every three hours. And I think that's awesome. Right. So uh, I told you yesterday about the flood that happened in my apartment, right? And I'm house sitting for a friend, and I felt so bad it's happening on my watch. Uh, but the next day, like the next day was kind of interesting. So after the flood, the day after, uh, you know, the balcony flooded, I had to go clean out the drain, whatever it was. But then this morning, what happened was, um, you know, I, uh, I let the dog out. The dog goes into the balcony because that's where they usually go to, the, you know, do their business and stuff. And, you know, I was recording my things. And then when I finally came out of my room after recording, there's like dirt everywhere. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And then you start looking. I look closer at the dirt and it's like it's like the dog's paw, paw tracks kind of thing, right? Dirt tracks everywhere in the house. So I'm like, man, the, the house just got cleaned refreshingly the day before. But like less than 12 hours later, less than 12 hours later, uh, there's tracks everywhere. It's dirty again. And 
I was kind of like angry. I was like, what the hell? I, I even started yelling at the dog, right? I was getting, well, not yelling, but mad at like, what are you doing? Look at your tracks. We just cleaned this yesterday. And I'm talking to the dog. The dog's kind of looking at me with us, like a, his head is tilted to the right. Like he doesn't understand anything I'm saying, right? And I was just upset. I had to clean it again and then go to the balcony and clean the balcony because of all that dirt and grime that kind of was built up there. And um, after that experience, it was kind of like two thoughts that I had, right? The first one was it reminds me, like especially this week's message of Elijah and the 850 prophets of Baal, uh, Baal and Asherah. Uh, it reminded me of that story because uh, one, one thing that Sunsim talks about, all, not always, but he talks about this, and I remember this multiple times. It's like... Uh, after a huge victory, defeating the 850 prophets of uh, idol worshippers, the next day, a smaller problem pops up with Jezebel. And then Elijah just gives up like, oh, forget this. And he just goes into the desert for 40 days and he asks God, just, just you know, I, I want to die. Right. And one thing that Sassim did talk about is after a huge victory, right, um, when a smaller victory comes up again, people tend to lose strength or they even give up. When just a, like you just had this huge victory and then this small thing pops up and you want to give up, right? And, you know, it's like, that's so true because here I am, did this huge cleaning the other day and then today, it wasn't anything big, nothing close to the amount of cleaning I did yesterday and the paw tracks are everywhere and I just get one of those floor wipes and I just wipe it and it's done. But here I am like, and I kind of let myself go and I get mad at the dog and stuff like that too. And I'm just like, oh, I, I was like, you know, think about it. I should have been angrier yesterday, but I was more angry today because like, there, you know, we just cleaned it and now it's going to be like this. So, you know, I was sitting there like, uh, I was thinking to myself is like, yeah, you know, it's one of the things that's in the human mind is after we have this big victory, we think there's rest and we think we're all done. But, you know, life goes on and, you know, dirt happens every day. It happens all the time. Right. Like what would what would be crazy? What's kind of crazy is, is that if I didn't have a big cleaning, and I saw those tracks, I wouldn't get mad. It's like, all right, it's just another day. But because of that big victory. Right. And, and in my mind, I'm kind of fooling myself into it's all over because I did the biggest victory. And then when another normal problem comes up, it was a normal problem. I get angry and I kind of let myself go. And I think it's something that we have to kind of get into our heads is, yeah, you know what? Even if you have a big victory or whatever happens, life continues. It goes on. It doesn't stop like this. And we're going to have these little problems keep popping up every once in a while, right? And we just have to be, you know, understand this is what life is instead of giving up or getting angry and stuff like that too. So, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of us, a lot of you guys out there kind of go through that similar situation. You just had a big test. Something small happens and you argue, you get yell at your mom or your dad, whatever it is. But, you know, it's kind of like the release of all your stress that you kind of pent up while you did that big victory. But that's the first thing that I thought about. The second thing I thought about was a little bit, was like very, very different. Because uh, remember, I told you I was rebuking the dog. And I'm, you know, I'm like, what is wrong with you? What are you doing? We just cleaned it. What is, look at all the dirt, right? But later, you know, as I'm looking at the dog, I, I realized to myself is that dog doesn't understand anything that I just said. It's just doing what it normally does. And I, I thought to myself is like, wow, man, this is kind of how God feels. After, you know, can you imagine after God does a major cleanup, big judgment comes and things should be better, at least for a, a while, but the very next moment, we sin again, right? After we repent, we sin again. We make things dirty again. And I was kind of felt like that was like God showing me that's my shimjong. That's my shimjong. It's like I help you out so many times. And then people, we just go back to our normal lives and we start sinning again. And God's kind of like, what the heck? It kind, of, it kind of reminds me of Moses. He goes up, oh, everything's done. 40 days to, to get the Ten Commandments. And then they're already worshiping an idol. And God's like, serious? Like, serious? And uh, as much as he shouts and screams at us because we're not at the same level, we have no idea what, how angry or how upset or how uh, frustrated God must be. But I kind of realized that deep shimjong, right? It's kind of like, we just did this massive cleaning and then less than 12 hours later, you're out there dirtying it again, right? 
And it makes me realize about myself too is, yeah, we make these repentance and we cry and we say, God, I'm so sorry. And then what happens is we start to sin again. We Sometimes we do the exact same sin we should we just repented about too. So uh, I, I think that was kind of one of those big realizations that I had also thinking like, man, this is what we're like. Uh, also, uh, so so that's kind of like that experience I had today, kind of like a fallout of what happened with the with the the flood that happened last night. Either way, so uh, also uh, let's take a look at uh, the trial update. So Sunsim had a trial on Tuesday in Korea time at two p.m., and uh, there wasn't a lot of news on it. It, it just um, a lot of it had to do with whether he'll be arrested during trial. Like, will he still be in prison or not? And that that was kind of like the big thing that they were talking about because. Um, his detention, uh, they can only do, I believe it's like six months maximum, which ends on April 27th. And, uh, they're trying, the, the prosecution is arguing that, you know, Hey, we should arrest him during the trial and make sure he doesn't get out during the trial. And the argument the prosecutors made was, um, he committed sexual crimes, crimes during the recidivism period, which means that, you know, it's a time, you know, they'll probably be looking at him for like the next two, three years, four years, whatever it is. And they're saying, look, during the time he's supposed to be good, um, he did it again. And, and um, you know, he, he committed the crime again, even with an electronic location tracking device. And they also said, judging from his history of escaping overseas, which is false, because that, you know, we'll go in, we talked about that way before is there was no escaping overseas, right? So they're saying because of his history, which there isn't, uh, there is a risk of fleeing, so there needs to there there is a need for a trial under arrest where he cannot be free, but he has to have that trial while he's under arrest, and you know he has to they want to keep him in jail. Now, the thing that's kind of odd about this, well, this is what uh, Sunseem's lawyer brought up and says this is totally against the principle of presumption of, innoc- of innocence to file a complaint for reverse accusation in a situation where the first trial has not even come out, right? So if you think about this, they're saying that, look, um, you got to keep him in jail because he committed sexual crimes during the uh, recidivism period. And the the defense lawyer is like, there is no decision yet. We're still in that trial. So how can you say that he committed the crimes when we're still in the trial and use that uh, against him? It makes no sense whatsoever because he's not even pronounced guilty from the courts yet. But you're saying that he committed the crimes, which makes, you know, and, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a completely reasonable uh, argument, right? So the court does plan to decide whether to issue an arrest warrant before the expiry date of the 27th. Uh, Sun seems arrest in the first trial. But if you go by that argument, it doesn't really make sense because they're using an argument of something that's not even done yet. So they're assuming that he's guilty, which... He's not because the courts haven't even made a decision on that also. Uh, The second thing that's going to be going, uh, another uh, trial is going to be happening on May 18th. And that's going to be mainly on the admissibility of Maple's recording, right? You know, the Netflix audio, they're going to go into uh, the admissibility of it on uh, May 18th. So maybe, probably Sunseam doesn't have to be present for that one there, but uh, that's going to be on May 18th. But let's, let's pray about this, guys. He doesn't, you know, if you think about the reasoning that the, the prosecutors gave, there's no reason he needs to be in, uh, in prison after the, the six months is over. Like, this is just abs- their, their reasoning actually makes no sense because they're presuming he's guilty even though the, the trial hasn't even ended. So let's really pray for that. So Sunset can at least be free, be in Wilmington, he can do the things that he needs to do, and then go to court when he needs to go to court, right? And, you know, what they're saying about him fleeing overseas in the past, uh, we've already been over that point, and uh, that's uh, completely false, right? So, you know, he was able, you know, all the accusations uh, were taken care of, and he didn't need to go back. He, he was, it wasn't necessary for him to even go back to Korea. He was actually doing things the legal way, right? But it's just kind of the way that the, uh, the media had represented that, that makes them say, oh, he did it before, when it's not completely not true, all right? Uh, Another thing is uh, there is a video that is out about the video. You know, remember Netflix? uh, Those those of you guys with documentary, there was a a video uh, in Hong Kong, sometimes with two girls in a tent, right? 
Uh, there is a video out about the person who was actually there and explaining what was happening in that situation. Uh, one was that person, one was a translator, right? So, you know, it, it's quite interesting. I'm leaving the link in the description below. You can watch it yourself. You can turn on the CC so you can get the English translation. But it's awesome. Like, you know, this is the person that was actually there in the tent, right? And that's that's something where we, I, I think they're in the tent, right? And um, this, this is someone I know too, like one of the leaders in Japan. But uh, guys... Sometimes you just got to wait. It's only been a month and a half since the, the Netflix on March 3rd. And we've already got the answer of, oh, this is what was actually happening there. This is what this is the reasoning behind it. So take a look at the last link in the description below. You're going to find that um, that YouTube video of uh, what actually happened in the tent. So, you know, that's one of the questions. That's one of the videos that tons of people have actually asked me about. And I was, you know, I had a mental exercise on that. But more importantly, now that there's someone, an eyewitness there, go ahead and watch that video. And then you can take, you, you'll get a better idea of what the context is of that situation. All right. So uh, today is Q&A Thursday, and I got a great three-part question from Karen. So this is what we're going to go over today. First question is, what does the 10th commandment actually mean? I've never heard it before until yesterday. It wasn't explained in the Sunday message as the other commandments were. And this also seems like the third or fourth sermon about repentance this year uh, alone. And it's rare to have this many in only the first 19 weeks of the year. It seems the theme should have been that this year instead of the, what we have right now. Uh, also, how does one actually do a repentance prayer? If a prayer is 45 minutes, uh, as Sunseem says, the first bit is usually casting away Satan's. How long is a repentance section for? Do you just say, I am sorry, God, for X, Y, Z, etc.? Or how exactly? We also need to pray Thanksgiving prayers and not forget those. Okay. And I think there's a last question there is, why should we keep repenting for things we already repented for last week and, don't, and won't do it again? Once repented for, I thought we are forgiven, which is true. But uh, we'll get into that question also. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so let's get into some music for some member artists from around the world. And we have uh, some cool songs today. We're going to start off with uh, one of those fresh new songs that came out last week from MC One Love over there with Rapture Collective from Australia. Uh, this song is Beautiful Trauma, and I love this song too. Second song is Xeniac from PMA in Korea with the self-titled song Xeniac. And last but not least, we have Renee Lai from Taiwan with Head Above Water. <laughs> Gotta get it off my chest. It's therapy. Beautiful trauma. Beautiful trauma. What love? What love? They represent any rap and say it's conscious. Stuck in the days, blinded by the haze, barely semi-conscious. Lacking in clarity, saying nothing but nonsense. Words coming from the darkness, they disturbed by the conscience. My rhyme's so deep that the tap to your subconscious. A last key kid, nobody home on my own. Feeling the wonders on the streets I roam. Sometimes I walk away with nothing to say. Even if I explain, you wouldn't understand anyway. Times I had nothing left, and will I take it? Will I make it break it, but I never fake it? Real. When I had nothing at all, all I had left was you. And you pulled me through, God's watching me. What will I do? I'm gonna ride with you. When the fakeness shows, you always remain true. Fake in action, 100 over 100 fractions. God's love the main attraction, anything else, abstraction. Overcoming no matter what comes, get to the other side. So let's ride, with word and action coincide. I don't joke about suicide, because I live through it. No joke, what you laughing about, be spoke. Lord, that's my confession, to get it off my chest session. Life lessons, experience, gain through pain Weight on my shoulders, as heavy as boulders What do you turn to? Who do you turn to? When you're going through it Beautiful trauma Light shines in the darkest hour With God's power as an automatic mental kill switch Sound destruct button Disrupting the positive construct Negative thoughts Lines that I bought Putting up my no sales sign I see the signs Set a new course Read between the lines Crack the cold morphs Use the force Skywalk on them Skywalk on them Not all of us came from good homes Some of us were focused And God put the pieces back together Giving hope to endure stormy weather Gone through a lot of hard times Tears of my past filling up my rhymes We gotta struggle and strive Survive before we can thrive It all works out to good in the end Follow your grace, can you lend me 
my heart can you miss?
That was Renee Lai from Taiwan with the song Head Above Water. I think the original song is from Avril Lavigne, right? Uh, before that, Xeniac with the self-titled song from PMA in Korea. And of course, feature artist of the day, that is MC One Love from Australia from Rapture Collective with Beautiful Trauma. All right, so let's get into today's news going on around the world. And as brides of this history, and we have the responsibility to pray and repent for this world, let us be those that know what is going on. So let's first start off with what's going on in North Korea as Kim Jong-un orders launch of spy satellite to proceed. Putting a surveillance satellite into orbit is a key goal of North Korean leader's military strategy. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has said his country has completed the development of its first military spy satellite and ordered officials to proceed with the planned launch, according to state media. Kim, who was visiting the country's National Aerospace Development Administration, said developing reconnaissance capabilities was a priority to counter threats from the U.S. and South Korea and that several satellites were necessary to firmly establish an intelligence-gathering capability. The state's 
Uh, this all coming from the state's KCNA News Agency reported on Wednesday. Kim also urged the deployment of the satellite as scheduled but did not elaborate on the launch date. Uh, in December, North Korea conducted what it called an important final phase test for a spy satellite and said it would complete preparation for the launch by April. Kim also accused the U.S. and South Korea of expanding hostile military campaigns in the name of bolstering their alliance and claimed the U.S. was trying to turn South Korea into an advanced base for aggression and an arsenal for war by deploying military assets like aircraft carriers and nuclear-capable bombers in the region. The U.S. and South Korean militaries have been expanding their combined drills to beef up their deterrence against North Korea's growing nuclear threats. This week, they launched a 12-day aerial exercise involving some 110 warplanes and staged a one-day naval missile defense exercise with Japan. In other news, let's go back on to the updates of what is happening with the fighting in Sudan. And it continues even after a ceasefire was negotiated. The regular army and the rival paramilitary paramilitary rapid support forces accused each other of failing to respect the truce. Fighting raged in Sudan hours after an internationally brokered truce was supposed to have come into effect as forces loyal to dueling generals battled for key locations in the capital and accused each other of violating the ceasefire. Uh, loud gunfire reverberated on Tuesday in the background of live feeds by multiple television news channels in the Khartoum capital region minutes after the agreed 6 p.m. local time ceasefire was agreed upon. The regular army and the rival paramilitary, rapids, uh, rival paramilitary, which is the RSF, issued statements accusing each other of failing to respect the ceasefire. The army's high command said it would continue operations to secure the capital and other regions. Uh, last but not least, third um, news article is about uh, a parking garage collapses in New York, killing at least one. No foul play is suspected is suspected in the U.S. structure's collapse, which took place near Pace University in Lower Manhattan. A four-story parking structure has collapsed in the U.S. city of New York on Tuesday, killing at least one worker and injuring five others who were in the building, authorities said. Emergency personnel deployed robotic devices after firefighters were pulled back from the fallen structure because of unstable conditions. Those robots continue to check the site for any further casualties, but as authorities said, they believed everyone who was in the building had been accounted for. No foul play was suspected, and uh, the, the city police c commissioner said, we have no reason to believe that it was anything other than a structural collapse. One person was pronounced dead on the scene. Four more were taken to area hospitals for injuries, and a sixth individual who was hurt declined medical treatment. Uh, and that comes from the fire chief of New York City. So lots to pray about, lots of things to repent for. Just kind of seeing the result of the situation from spiritual to physical. And it's something we really need to repent for uh, as much as we can. All right. So let's get into some sporting news uh, across uh, across what is happening uh, in the world. Let's start off with the NBA. So yes, NBA uh, playoffs, it's already game two for a bunch of other um, uh it is already game two for a lot of the playoff series. The first game uh, wasn't much. It was Boston defeating Atlanta 119-106. It wasn't even close. Uh, they are, Boston's now up 2-0. Cleveland comes, fights back and, and uh, actually destroys uh, New York Knicks by 17 points, 107-90. That series is tied at 1-1. And then also we have... Uh, the Clipper, uh, the Clippers, they won the first game, but they lost to the Phoenix Suns 123-109 to uh, in Game 2 as Devin Booker, who had 38 points on the night. Now the series is tied at 1-1. Uh, in soccer news, you have the UEFA Champions League. Uh, two games on the slate. It was Real Madrid defeating Chelsea 2-0, um, winning in the aggregate. Now Real Madrid advances to the semifinals. AC Milan ties Napoli 1-1. And they, they win in aggregate 2-1, to one, and AC Milan advances to the semifinals. So uh, good luck to them, uh, both of them. And we have two teams that are set to get into the semifinals. Let's see who are the other two teams. I believe they'll happen this week. In tennis, Monte Carlo, Djokovic's first event of the clay season. He won his first match, then fell in the round of 16 to Lorenzo Musetti. Uh, he was pragmatic about the state of his game on clay, even ahead of the loss. Uh, and even with Djokovic's return, it was Andre Rublev who took the title in three hard-fought sets over Holger Rune. All right? So it was a memorable week in Monte Carlo, but that's not what everyone is still talking about. Instead, it's the off-the-court squabble between Daniil Medvedev and Alexander Zverev. Uh, it's kind of, yeah, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty childish, though. But uh, it was during a spirited round of 16 match. 
which saw Medvedev save two match points to win in a third set tiebreak. Zverev was none too pleased to what he perceived to be tactical antics throughout uh, from his opponent. Medvedev removed the net pole during the second set, took an unsanctioned bathroom break in the decider, and shushed the crowd at one point. So... Yeah, you know, that's kind of what happens in sports. When it's ultra competitive, these things happen. All right, so there it is. Top three news in sports and around the world. Hope it's something that you guys can really enjoy. But you know what that means. It is the golden time. And yes, it is the golden time, a time of praise and worship to the Holy Trinity. Hope all of you guys are looking forward to giving glory to God and the Holy Spirit. So, what are we going to praise and worship today? We're going to start off with Let's Rise Up, and then an oldie but goodie, I believe, and we'll end things off with Bury the Old. So as one body of the Morning Star Drive, let's spend this time giving praise, honor, and glory to the Holy Trinity. Now is the time to rise up and shine. Pray without ceasing and seek the Lord with all your heart. The army of God must rise and stand up against the dark forces. Prepare yourselves completely and know that the battle has already begun. If you don't stand up and fight, then who will? God has called you to shine and make this history happen. Are you ready? Let's go!
as I am walking on this road that leads to the city of gold. The Lord said, is planted in my center, and on the Lord's wings I will rapture higher. I believe that the will has been fulfilled. I believe that my spirit rose with him. I believe I'm living in the city of gold. And in this life, I will always give thanks as I rise to one's that plan. With the condition of the Lord, God's dream As for me, I'll walk this path unchanging. I'll do what I must, and I'll never turn back. I believe that the will has been fulfilled. I believe that my spirit rose.
what a wonderful and suitable song for this time right now, especially in a time of repentance. That is Bury the Old. Before that, I believe, and that first song, Let's Rise Up. All right, so let's get into today's word study for today. And of course, it is Thursday, so it is question and answer Thursday. We've got a bunch of questions on repentance and the 10th commandment. So let's get into it. So the first question is, what does the 10th commandment actually mean? I've never heard it before until yesterday. It wasn't explained in the Sunday message. So this is a question that I, 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 could, I should have done it the week before, right? Um, it, was, it wasn't explained in the Sunday message as the other commandments were. Right. So and then it proceeds to this also seems like the third or fourth sermon about repentance this year alone. It's rare to have this many in only the first 19 weeks of the year. It seems the theme should have been that this year instead. Right. Okay. so let's first get into this. Um, What does the 10th commandment actually mean? So when you look at the Bible, the the word that's being used the most is covet. Right. And covet is a word that describes a characteristic of desiring possessions of others. Right. So it's about it's, it sounds it's, it looks more to be about comparison. I'm jealous they have this and I don't have that. So I want what they have. And when you look at this comparison of uh, compare like people who are uh, comparisons or having jealousy of what others have uh, and kind of not able to look at and be thankful of what you have. And when you look at all the Ten Commandments, it's kind of one of the only commandments that looks towards what is contained inside your heart. Right. Like as Jesus says in Mark chapter seven, he says, "What what comes from the heart?" And uh, Jesus says, "That which come from the uh, comes out of man that defiles the man." Right. So w- whatever comes out of your heart defiles you. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lavishness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. So Jesus knew that you know by human nature we do have these types of things that come out. And it seems that uh, coveting is one of the major reasons why a a lot of the other sins stem from, because it's part of the Ten Commandments, not wanting what your neighbor has, whether it's your neighbor's car or house or even wife, right? And I think that's one of the big things when it comes to uh, the Tenth Commandment. It's it's more of the checking the condition of yourself, right? And when you look at the way that Sunsim touched upon this Tenth Commandment a few weeks, was it last week or the week before? The way that he said was, about he says the tenth commandment is and he starts talking about slandering and hating your brothers and sisters and this is something that does come from your heart the heart you have if people have the heart that covets and wants what others have and when they don't have it it's easier for us to say terrible things about others and we you know and that's why you kind of look at it is when we look at celebrities and people who are rich and have everything it's so easy for us to say terrible things about others in that position, right? We tear them apart, the celebrities, famous people, and they have all the things that we want. And you can kind of see that that's one of the biggest issues that we're facing right now in this society is, you know, it's the coveting, that jealousy. I wish, well, why do they deserve, why do they get that? And I don't get that, right? And it's more about the condition of our hearts. So uh, I think that's, when you look at the 10th commandment, uh, yes, it looks like we're coveting and we're comparing and we want things of our neighbors, like possessions, right? But when you really look at it, it's about the condition of the heart, right? Wanting something that, you know, frankly, in most in most cases, you don't even you, we don't even deserve it anyways, right? We don't know what the other person did, but we're kind of just judging them. Like, oh, why did they get all this? And from that jealousy stems a lot of things where we start to say bad things about other people, slander them and stuff too, and uh, especially people who are in bigger positions, right? Uh, the second part of the question is about, this is the third, fourth sermon on repentance, right? And why doesn't the theme change to this? And the answer to that is, it's actually not rare to have multiple sermons on repentance or a different subject within a year that has, uh, you know, a different theme, right? Like, I, I look at that as strictly a reaction to the situation that's going on right now. And I think it's perfectly okay. Like, I don't, I don't see it all of a sudden becoming, oh, this should be the theme of the year, Right? When you look at the situation we're in right now, it's actually quite perfect for the current situation for us to talk about repentance, the way that we treat each other, and the things that we need to fix in this history. Right? So the theme of the year is something that God sees in the future that we don't see. He sees the overall situation. And to say that after three or four sermons in the first 19, 20 weeks, we haven't even gone through half the year, uh, that we should be centered on repentance, I think that would be a little bit premature. And I think it's 
we could look at that only if we saw the situation we're looking at right now, but not seeing the current future, like the, the far future, what's going to happen by the end of the year. So I think we got to trust that if the theme is from God, then uh, that's, that's the theme that's going to be prevalent as the most important thing that we need to do for this year. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. Uh, a second question is, how does one actually do a repentance prayer? So if a prayer is like 45 minutes, uh, the first bit is usually casting away Satan's. Uh, how long is the repentance section for? <coughs> Excuse me. So do you just say, I am sorry, God, for X, Y, Z, or how exactly? We also need to pray Thanksgiving prayers and not forget those, right? So personally speaking, I would say that uh, maybe the question is formulated wrong because we can't say that there's an actual time of how you have to do it. Like the only time, the only time I've ever heard of time for a prayer uh, is when Sassim says, yeah, the average prayer, you know, to have a good prayer, you should do like 40 minutes in the pre -dawn right? At least 40 minutes. And then another thing I've heard some say is like 70% of your prayer should be uh, Thanksgiving. Like those are the only times I've heard anything when it comes to like related to time. But I think we shouldn't be looking at in a time, like as a time frame question, right? So we look at repentance. Uh, repentance has many parts to it, many different parts. And of course, uh, that first part is um, repentance by confession, right? You have to talk about it. That's like the first part of the sin. Now, some sins are simple enough and they just need an apology. It's kind of like when you bump into someone, oh, sorry. You don't have to go any further or deeper into it when you just bump into someone by mistake, right? But then there's other sins that need a deeper look, uh, look into yourself and trying to figure out why it actually happened that way and looking at God's side and how much it actually hurt him or why is it such a bad sin, Right? I'm sure a lot of you have had this before where when someone apologizes to you, sometimes you wonder if they even know why they are apologizing, right? And that's why one of the big ways uh, that Sansim does talk about repentance is you got to be very detailed about it. Detail about what actually happened, why, like, uh, um, how it happened, and not even just that, why it happened and why you did that. Why are you even apologizing in the first place? So we have to be detailed in why we are repenting, why you did it, look deeper into your own heart and realizing about yourself how you could have done it better. And of course, the last part is, oh God, I can see why this hurts you, right? Now, uh, the, other, the other question that kind of popped out in here is, um, how long does it have to be, right? And that, well, this... I'll get into this point a little bit later, but I'll talk about because this has to do with the next question, right? And but I would say the concept has to go into understanding how uh, understanding how bad your sin really is, right? That like you need to understand how bad it is, understanding God's shimjung in that matter, right? And you know some sins are a lot are different than others. Some some sins are going to require more time, right? Until you're fully repented, right? So, you know, that's the first part, which is, you know, that even that in itself, it, you, can, you can see how deep the prayers can go. Some sins are very, very simple and easy, quick and easy. I am so sorry you're sincere about it, right? Like bumping into someone. And some sins are going to take some time for you to, to think about yourself and to be able to talk about in uh, more deeply. Now, the second, type of, second part of repentance is action. And, of course, actions are required for most sins most, right? Because there are the simple ones like, you know, you bump into someone, very, very simple. Oh, I'm sorry. And you move on and it's done, right? It's too, it's small. But then there are some that require, uh, require you to take action in some way. Of course, we talk about um, the best way to repent is to never do that sin again, of course. But not all sins are like that because some things are habitual. Some things are about your character that you need time to change, right? And of course, the most important of action is stopping sinning. But uh, there are other things that we should be doing too to help ourselves. For instance, uh, taking action that helps you to stop from sinning again, right? Because some things, they're not like cold turkey. Some things take time, right? You need to take action to stop the habit. And it shows the effort that you put in, right? So like say, for instance, something that becomes a, like a part of you is like a smoking habit, and it's too hard for you to quit. So what you do is you start putting, implementing different things to help you to stop smoking, 
right? Like for instance, people will buy a nicotine patch, right? And that nicotine patch will stop your craving and it'll help you to stop craving those cigarettes, right? Or you ask your friends to hold you accountable. That's another way of doing things. And you're putting it into action to help you to remind yourself and to stop doing it, right? Like, you know, some people I've seen like to change the way that their mind works. Some people just even rearrange their furniture in their house so that they, they'll, they'll have a physical thing in their mind to help them to think about, um, to help them to think about what they should be changing. Oh, I rearranged my furniture and it helps them to reset their mind so they can refresh their hearts and uh, repent and stop. You know, it reminds them of what they're doing. So people put like, um, you know, the what would Jesus do bands on their wrist and that helps them out too in different ways. Uh, I know someone who uh, had a problem like uh, with pornography. And what they did was they put like security on their phone and their laptops and they got a friend to put in a password that they would never know. And that security feature stops them from seeing anything pornographic on their, their phones and their, their laptops, which means that uh, you know, if they really wanted to, to see those things, they would have to take extra steps to go and see it because they don't even know the password. And it's just, you know, it, making, it, it, it makes it harder for, for them to do those things. And those are actions that you take, right? And, you know, uh, the last thing I would say when it comes to repentance, uh, to, to have a good prayer of repentance, make sure you always pray uh, to the Holy Spirit to reveal more of your sins. And one thing that Sansim does say is people have so many things to repent about that you cannot count. But when we repent, we get into that situation where we're like, what do I need to pray for now? Oh, man, I think I've prayed for everything, right? Like, what do I have to pray for now? People get into that, right? Because we're like, oh, what do I pray about now? And that's because, you know, a lot of the things we forget, a lot of things we don't know is sin. And that's why we need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal our sins to us. So make sure that's part of your prayer too. Now, uh, another question is, why should we keep repenting for things we already repented for the week before? We're not going to do it again. Because once we repented for, I thought we are forgiven. Okay? So this is a true and false statement at the same time, depending on the sin. For instance, I agree. Once you stop, it's done. Right? Action is probably the most powerful way to repent. Right? And it, the one thing that I would refrain from is making it too transactional. Right? Because when you stop, it might just be you stopping, but you're not really, you know, sorry in your heart because it's just something that you could stop anyways, right? But that's why I think that to have complete repentance, you stop it from being transactional when you make it a true relationship. And in that true relationship, you're going to need the words, the sincere words, plus the stopping of it. Now, uh, why do you have to keep repenting for certain things? I'm going to say there are some things that need to be continually repented for and some aren't. So let me give you an example of that. Okay, the example of it is sometimes there's sins that need a condition. It's true, right? Like, uh, let me give you an example. Um, uh, let's say a sin, really, really bad sin, like for instance, the fall. Okay, so someone commits a grave sin like the fall, and do you think that it should just end at, oh, I'm sorry, and it's done, and I'll, you'll never do it again, and it's done? No. When it comes to the fall, many times we've heard people doing 21-day condition, 21-day uh, uh, like fasting condition, 40-day condition. Like some of these sins, the worse and worse the sins are, uh, some of them require more than just, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again, and you're done. No, because people have to realize the, the deeper the sin gets, the more it's hurtful to God, the more that it, it, it scratches God's heart. That is not enough just to say sorry once. We need to, like, like put it this way. When you look in a real true relationship, if you repent, if, I'm sorry, if you cheat on your husband or wife, do you think that one time saying sorry and then not doing it again is enough? Or would you really feel sorry and, and, and repent about it constantly? Right? That's the thing. Uh, some sins require more than just one day, seven days. Some require 14. Some require 21. Some people do 70 days, right? It's basically about the concept of how much you understand how bad your sin is. And some, not all, remember, but some sins require you uh, to make a condition. A deep condition where you repent it over and over because you finally realized God's shimjong when it comes to that sin. So that's why I say it's kind of dependent, right? Yeah, once you repent, you are forgiven for most things, but some things do require a condition so that you realize how bad and how deep that sin is, 
right? Because, you know, a lot of times with the sins that we have, we have so many sins, some that are very deep, right? And we need to pray and realize more about ourselves when it comes to those sins. Why did I do that? Why do you keep making this, this certain sin keep happening, right? And if we stay away from the transactional relationship, then it's going to be a real relationship where I am sorry because I did something so bad and I feel sorry for a long time, right? Because uh, if it becomes transactional, it becomes quite a cold relationship. Hey, I stopped it, so stop getting mad at me. Hey, I, I told you I'm sorry already. It becomes more transactional. So uh, I, I think we got to get away from that. But most of uh, uh, it's about being sorry and understanding what you've done and understanding the other side, like what, what's happening to God because of that sin, right? And, uh, you know, it, there's nothing wrong. I think it's better to realize more deeply about the sin anyways, right? So remembering what you did and not wanting to do it again is very, very important. Okay, so there it is. Uh, those are the, the, the questions for today's Q&A Thursday. hope it's something that you guys really enjoyed, as I've enjoyed too. Uh, so let's get into today's song of choice, right? So now that we have the Q&A Thursday all done, let's get into the song of choice for today. And I've been liking this guy Chandler Moore, and he's, he's, a, he's got this good hoarse voice, but I love this song. It's called Built for This, and it's featuring his father. It's a father and son song. So his father is Bishop Brian Moore. This is Chandler Moore with his father, Brian Moore. And this song is called Built for This. There's no battle that I'm not built for. I'm flesh and blood. That's not my war Mountain moments Or valley seasons Come whatever Greater was built for this from the start it was finished in this world I don't fit but in your arms I was made for this I've survived what's there this oh, I was made in your Disappointment is meant for your good. No times teach you more than the high cool. There's a lesson. In what you suffer Oh my child Hold on longer And you'll see You were built for fear from the start you were finished In this world you don't fit But in his arms you were made For this I survived Much more than this You were made Down, oh, you won't 
thought it was finished In this world I don't fit it But in your arms I was made for this I'm so hurt words Words than this Oh my God I was made in your image I was built for And that was Chandler Moore and his father, Brian Moore, as they sing together, uh, built for this. And uh, that kind of leads into today's Sermons in the Sky, because listening to that song, there's that one line in there uh, that really made me think deeply. Uh, and it's about having mountain moments and valley seasons. And it's kind of we're in one of those mountain moments right now in this history. And this entire year is going to be the same thing. And he's saying, we were built for this. We were built for this very moment. And uh, I think the other lyrics were lyrics in the chorus are like, we will not be torn down. And uh, what I was thinking about was all the difficulties that we're going through right now, this mountain moment and valley season. Uh, we have gone through some really, really like crazy tough times just this year, within the last month and a half. And it reminds me of this very famous verse, which is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And many people use this verse to comfort themselves, but I do believe that we have to look at this a little bit more deeply and understand what this really means. And it says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, right? Which is, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can endure it. And this is, you know, the one line that everyone talks about is, God will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Now, what does that mean, right? Especially for us in this mountain moment right now. Does that mean we will never have any difficulties or any hardships that are harder than, that we, can, than we can control? And the answer is no. Because you felt it. We've, we've experienced it where some of the difficulties are too much for us. I think we would be lying to say that there are sometimes there's some difficult things we didn't know how to handle it and we're stuck. We're stuck. We don't know what to think. We don't know where to go. We don't know what is the right answer. And it's kind of, it makes us feel like, well, God, you said you're going to give me something that this, not, this, these temptations are not going to be beyond what I can bear. Isn't it? We've had some times where we broke down. We've had some times where we were so confused. And guess what? We're not going to be able to handle everything. We're not. And does that mean that this verse is a lie? No, because it's about the second, it's the sentence right after. But when you, were temp when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Which means that, yeah, there's going to come times where it's too big for you, but God will provide a way out so you don't have to go through it anymore. And when you think about this, it's like, oh, so God's not going to give you that temptation, but if it ever reaches that level, you're going to get a way out because it is going to kill you. It's going to break you down so much. It was so, it sometimes it's so hard. You can't, you're paralyzed. You're frozen. See, when we look at our life right now, and when we're in the valley season or the these mountain moments, it's so difficult and we can't make it through. But the point that God is making here is God never said you're going, you have to do everything alone. 
When you look at a lot of the difficulties we faced in life, why were we able to make it through? Sometimes there was that one person that was there for you. Sometimes there was that person who just really said the proper advice, put, you, put your mind into the proper perspective, and then you were able to handle it. And as people of faith, how many times has God saved us? God has given the peace when we prayed. God has given the answer when we prayed. To be tempted beyond what we can bear, yeah, sometimes it's going to happen. And God says, let me give you a way out. It doesn't mean you have to do it alone. Right? We are told, if you think about the word, we've received all the educations. Even this week and last week's message, God says, I will always accompany you. All the praise music we hear, we are never alone. When you go through the most difficult times, more than you can bear, it means you need to rely on God. You need to even stick to Him even more closely when it's that difficult because He says He'll be there for us. We were not built to handle things alone. We were built in love. And what does love require? Love requires a counterpart. And we're supposed to make it through together, each situation together with God. That's the whole purpose of a love relationship. It's that we're not alone. We're going to do it together. And as you know, the Bible says two are better than one. Because when someone falls, you have someone to pick you up. When you're not in a good condition, someone is there to take care of you constantly. We were made with love. And this love compels us to act together with someone. We were built in this way. And this is why it's impossible to live life alone. God is telling us there will be times that are more difficult and harder than you can even bear. But he also tells us, I'm going to be with you. Call on me. I'll work through people around you. I'll comfort your heart. I'll just, I'll give you so much love that you can handle the situation. You don't have to die. You don't need to be destroyed by a situation. Call out to God and the answers will come. And one of the reasons why I'm reminded by this is because, like, I told you about how many people, I, I told you that so many people have asked me about that video from Hong Kong where Sun Sim is in a tent with two women. And now we have that video that's out with the eyewitness of the situation giving you the exact context of what happened. But guess what? Netflix came out on March 3rd. Today is April 20th, which means it's like, a month and a half later, we get the full answer. The answer came. And all we had to do with, was cling to God, hold on to Him with all of our hearts, knowing that the truth will come out. See, when you see answers like this, then you think about, oh, what about, what, what about the, the Netflix audio? Could have been a devastating moment where we just make a decision at that moment, it's just too hard for us to bear because, oh my gosh, if this is true, this means, oh my goodness. But if we cling to God and we allow Him to work and we ask God and pray to Him, God, help us through this, we will get the answer and it's worth waiting for. We need to trust God more. Hold on to Him more than you trust people. People can say all sorts of things, and most of the time you can't even you can't even confirm if it was true or not. God has your back, and God will make sure things get taken care of. Don't think God's gonna leave us in that most difficult situation. God's not gonna let you die. God's not gonna let you be destroyed. That trust in God is the most important point. Because I know when I trust someone. When I trust them, they'll get it done. And even when there's only a few minutes left, I trust until the end because that's someone I know. That's what trust does. When you trust someone, everyone else is freaking out. But because you trust that person, it allows us not to get nervous, frantic, or panic. And most of the time, we're kind of doubting only because our mind is in that emotional, frantic, panic state when there's no need to be. 
trust God. God will do things in the right time. So just wait on it. Even when it feels, because that's just a feeling, guys. You feel the desperation and the anxiousness. That's just your feeling. Trust God. Just because you feel it doesn't mean it's actually true. God knows the proper timing, and we need to trust in Him, rely on Him, and just follow. All right? So uh, that is the Sermons in the Sky for today. I hope it's something that inspires you and motivates you even more or opens your eyes to a new perspective. I hope that everyone, all of you, have an amazing and awesome Thursday, you know, which means tomorrow's Friday, which is the weekend is here already. What a fast and fast-paced week we've already had, all right? Everyone have an amazing Thursday, and we'll see you guys again tomorrow on the Morning Star Drive on 117.8. The morning star drive on 17.8. You soaring up with sky, now's the time, don't delay. I'm sitting in my ride, and it's time to fly. So let's realign, just listen and fill your mind. I'm burning with desire and the passion. Nobody can stop me when I'm like.